Looking up at the night sky, you can see a few thousand stars and the billions of stars that make up our local galaxy. And whilst viewing them, it might be easy to assume they're all actually fairly similar balls of hot gas. However, this is actually far from the truth. There are many stars like our own which are referred to as main sequence stars. There are some smaller stars which are known as dwarf stars, which are subdivided by their colour. And there are some giant stars, and even some really rather strange hypergiants, like V.Y. Canis Majoris. The general description of stars as dense balls of hot gas is actually a rather oversimplification. To borrow from Shrek, stars are like onions in that they have layers. Generally, as you move out from the centre, so the temperature drops, but also so does the density, both in terms of space between the atoms and also in terms of the atoms themselves. Now, V.Y. Canis Majoris, for instance, were it be placed in our solar system, the outer edge would extend beyond Jupiter. However, as you get to where Jupiter would be, the density of gas present would be actually less than a millionth of that on Earth, and it would nearly all be hydrogen. The heart of the star is a dense ball of gas. Because of the total mass of the star, the gravitational forces pulling everything closer and closer to him. The more things are pulled in, the denser it gets, the denser it is, local gravitational forces increase. So it continued to become a black hole, except for a countering force. As the atoms are forced closer together, the rate of which nuclear fusion takes place increases. For most of that process, nuclear fusion, heat is given off as part of the reaction, and this counters the force of gravity trying to collapse the star. As long as the reaction continues at a fairly even rate, the star will remain stable. This rate of nuclear reaction helps to explain why, at first, some rather odd things may happen in giant stars compared to ones like our own. As I said, the outer part of the giant star is actually a rather thin atmosphere, and difficult to say where the edge of the actual star is. It may be that V.Y. Canis Majoris is about a billion times the volume of our sun but only has about 20 times the mass of our sun. This means that V.Y. Canis Majoris had originally about 20 times the fuel that our sun started with. But because of the increased activity at the heart of the star, it would take it only about 10 million years to go through the fuel compared to our sun, which will probably take 10 billion years or more to burn through its fuel. This rate of burning through the fuel explains why and very large stars are rather rare, and smaller stars are rather common. Indeed, because V.Y. Canis Majoris is nearly 4,000 light years away from Earth, it's possible the star has actually burnt through all its material and actually gone supernova, but from the light from that event has actually yet to reach us. So because the normal process of hydrogen becoming helium will take up almost all of the 10 million years, the final processes of burning oxygen may be taking a hundred days and the burning of silicon may be only six days. As we get to the later stage of the fusion process, it produces less and less energy until iron is being produced. At that time, energy production ceases. At this stage, the crushing gravitational forces no longer have a, a counterbalancing force on and the star will collapse in on itself. However, with all this matter accelerating towards the centre of the star, we eventually reach the centre, and much like a car accelerating into a tyre wall, may rebound, and it's that rebounding which is the star going supernova, which may sometime soon light up our night sky for a very short time. It's this explosion of a massive star, which is why there is iron and other heavy elements in the Earth today, and why astronomers say we're all the product of dead stars.